title you know that my garden was under attack by vine weevils in this video we're going to talk about the life cycle of vine weevils how to get rid of them and i'm going to show you the destruction that vine weevils caused to the balcony garden so let's get straight into it if you found this video useful don't forget to give it a like because that will encourage youtube to share it with more people who need help to get rid of these beasts so here is the hooker huh? and I'm just gonna. Oh, wow. I was expecting a little bit more of a pull here. So, I was doing a little bit of rummaging around in one of my containers, and this is a mega caramel hooker. Now, as I was rooting around, this part broke off, and I realized that I've got some uninvited guests. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see, but I'm going to see if I can get you a closer look. Holes in the stems of your plants are a good indicator that you have some uninvited guests. Oh, the nerve to even be looking at me like I'm disturbing you. My wishful thinking was hoping that this was some form of caterpillar. Cha, it is not. This is a vine weevil larvae. When they first hatch, they'll eat organic matter in the soil, but as they grow larger, they'll start to feed on roots. The larval stage are the most destructive for your plants because as they get bigger, they then begin to feed on the stems of your plants as well. They are also resistant to most pesticides. Once they've had their fill, they'll pupate. They'll then turn into a beetle. Although they're a beetle, they cannot fly. The adults have a lifespan of five to 12 months, although some studies have found them to live up to three years. But the most crazy fact about vine weevils is every single one of them are female. No males have ever been found. Each one of these ladies can lay up to a thousand eggs each. The adults will also feed on leaves and will leave a semicircle shape in the leaves. Both the larvae and adults are nocturnal. So the best time to catch them is at night time. If you had told me two years ago that I would be out at 2 a.m. in the morning looking for grubs and beetles, Cha honestly, the things I do for this bloody garden. <laughs> if you have had to do late night gardening, please let me know in the comments below so that I know I'm not alone and crazy. I did this a few nights in a row and I couldn't seem to find any of the beetles or any of the grubs. So I decided that I was going to come back and do it in the daytime. How to get rid of vine weevils? Well, unfortunately, they are tough critters to get rid of. So the first way to get rid of them is to go through your containers, find them, and then unalive them. Secondly, follow that same process, find them in your containers or your compost, and then you can actually feed them to birds, hedgehogs, frogs, lots of animals would actually eat the grubs. So take them out and put them somewhere visible for other wildlife to take care of naturally. And then the third are nematodes. Nematodes are microscopic worms. There are thousands of different species and each one has different dietary requirements. Some will eat plant matter, some will just eat soil, but some can target and eat specifically vine weevils. But your soil needs to be around about 10 degrees. As I mentioned, the soil has to be at the right temperature before we release nematodes. And right now we are in March and it's still too cold. So once the weather warms up a little bit, I'm going to come back and do another video using nematodes. There's a little bit of new root growth at the bottom, but the vast majority of the plant has died back. 
fact, as you can see, the leaves are still awesome. Ah. So this slug was in that container. There's a couple more I found as well. And so these have probably been, been munching away on the roots of some of those plants in there. So I'm going to try and rest. Oh, look at it. <laughs> so I'm going to go through that container, take out as many of these slugs as I can, um, and then look to try and rescue my hookerers. Where are you going? All right, I need to put the camera down. <laughs> I went through every single one of my containers on the balcony looking for grubs and child the mess it caused was unbelievable. So we have this red container. This was from my Chelsea show garden but as you can see it's not fared well and this is where my hooker was. Now this I believe was probably osteosperm. That is not doing too well at all. The salvia, on the other hand, is doing just fine. Same thing with the cord line over here. So I think I'm just gonna put it back. Apart from slug trails, there's nothing that I can see here. But I'm going to have to work my way through the soil. Okay, so I've done some chopping back. So here's the end product. Salvias are looking great now. The osteosperm. Well, it's chopped right back down to the base. And then the cord line, that's also doing well. But all of that space in there, I'm just gonna fill it with some of my homemade compost. Once I was satisfied that there were no more grubs in the container, I then used some of my homemade compost and used that as a mulch. Once again, I did this for every container on the garden. Imagine. I cannot wait for the nematodes. <laughs> I took up one of my hookeras from that same red container and I decided to divide them because they had been munched on by that grub. Rescuing the hookeras was pretty simple. I got the plant and then planted it in some homemade compost into a little pot. I then watered them in thoroughly with some of my pond water and then I brought them inside and kept my fingers crossed that they would root. I ended up with three plants all together and I'm so grateful because they're just so pretty. Now as you can see this one over here is doing absolutely fantastically well. In fact let me show you just how much growth it's made since that last video. So there's lots of brand new leaves there and just look at the colour. Uh, it's just awesome. However <laughs> not all of them uh, actually did very well at all. This is the one that had the grub in and Ooh. as you can see Girl. well you try yeah there's no rescuing that so I'm just gonna bin this one but I did manage to get a third plant from that same hooker and this one has rooted and is also making new leaves now just bear in mind this was around about two or three weeks ago, I think. And both of them that have survived are producing some brilliant new growth. So it's not all bad. Now the plan is for one or maybe both of them, but probably just one of those to go back into that red container. But I'm not gonna do that just yet. I'm gonna let these plants get a little bit bigger and a bit stronger before I reintroduce them back into that container. Fast forward and you can see just how well the container is now doing. There's new growth from the carex grass and even the osteospermum is producing new growth. 
I'm ecstatic with the progress of this garden. Fingers crossed that container will be okay. I hope this video has been useful for you. If it has, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye. I cannot wait to get those nematodes. That will be a real weight off my mind. If you've tried nematodes, let me know how that went below. And if you've got any tips or tricks that you can give me before I apply them to the garden, also please let me know in the comments. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed hanging out with me and hopefully I will see you all again very, very soon. <laughs> Bye!